Welcome, everyone. It's awesome to have you here. I'm here today with Niv Tarnabalan. How are you, Niv? Very good. Thank you, Amy. That's good. Great to be here. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I'd love to explore a little bit into your business journey. Um, now, I know you're the founder of Integral Insights, and so I'd love for you to share maybe just a little bit around, you know, the work that you're doing, um, who you're working with, and how you help them. Fantastic. Um, so I've worked for the last 14 plus years in private equity. And essentially, um, during that time, I've worked with a lot of founders who essentially like, you know, try to raise capital and essentially scale their businesses quickly. And I guess insights came about because I've noticed that a lot of founders were essentially coming to seek investment a bit too prematurely. You know, there were a little there could be a little bit more preparation and priming done from the founder's perspective that could have definitely gotten a better outcome. So the mm. whole point of Integral Insights was essentially to help founders prepare their business if or if at all they need investment, but essentially help them scale quickly and essentially to be more founder aligned, you know, founder focused than just to go out there and, you know, raise capital. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Because I think we hear that, you know, in the media a lot, it's a huge thing about raising investment and raising capital for business. And then when you really get into the nuts and bolts of it, there's a lot more involved than what you might even imagine, right? Absolutely. And and I guess a lot of things is a lot of people have it like backwards. You mm. know, so everyone goes, I want to raise capital first and then scale my business without necessarily having a clear idea of how you want to do it so what we do with founders essentially is we essentially sit them down and outline exactly how you'd like to grow your business and usually when you do that process it whether or not you need capital just falls out as an answer so you don't mm -hmm. you know sometimes we, we recently helped a business essentially you know potentially 10x their business in the next five years without having to raise capital and they didn't realize that was even an option so yeah. again, so the way we focus with our potential clients is a little bit different where we focus on, hey, how do you want to grow your business and how would that look like? And if at all, if you need capital, let's talk about that. Then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. It's a bit more of a holistic approach than just saying, you know, this is the only way forward for, for businesses, which is really Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And so you came from the private equity space in terms of, you know, you said there are 14 years in that space. What was it that made you make the decision to start your own thing and really, I guess, kind of leverage the skills and experience you had in the industry already and then go out on your own? I think fundamentally was realizing that I could be more of help to be on the founder side of things mm -hmm. rather than just being on the pure investor side. I feel like there are so many amazing founders out there who have these amazing ideas, but generally end up in like a, you know, a bit stuck, you know, they, they hit some, they hit some traction, they get some results and then they're like, oh no, what's next? Mm -hmm. And a lot of time is the assumption is I'm just going to drive more volume on an organic way, which isn't a bad idea, but you could actually step change your business. If you just think about a couple of things differently and then have access to a certain level of expertise and talent. So mm -hmm. my job essentially is to go into these businesses and say, essentially say you've done an amazing job you've you know you've essentially confirmed so many of your assumptions and they're now validated and you're you know generating some revenue but there's this four things you could do right now that could meaningfully step change this business and can essentially transform the thing you've been working on and achieve a bigger better outcome that you've always envisioned yeah, yeah. I love that. And I think it's really true. You know, once you, they always say, what is it? Um, new level, new devil in business, right? <laughs> I, I love so that. I'm going to steal like, that. Yeah. It's like once you've kind of, you know, gotten past that, you know, the big one million seven figure mark, and then you're into the two millions and more, you know, there's all sorts of things that start to happen, like you said, where you can keep doing the same things that you've been doing, you know, to get you through that first level. But often it takes something entirely different to get you from the 1 million to 10 million or 100 million and, and go from there. So is that kind of what you find with your clients as well with the, the businesses you've worked with? Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and I noticed that the founders who generally traverse these thresholds well are the ones who are generally very open to the situation. They're like, okay, this is definitely different than what I thought it was going to be. And they're willing to like listen but not just listen blindly, but essentially listen and then internally validate that, 
the feedback they're getting is appropriate. And then obviously then the next piece is execution. So yeah. founders who generally traverse these, you know, as you can, these levels, as you call it, and deal with said devils <laughs> are usually the ones who are quite, as you put it quite eloquently when we first chatted, like a very growth mindset focus where mm. they were very flexible in sense of they were very adaptive and, but, but not just purely from the space of like, I'll just listen to anyone, but from a, okay, I'm just going to validate this internally and iterate my way out of, mm. you know, out, out into the next level. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And in your own journey, Niv, like when you went from, you know, being the company side of things and the private equity side of things to running your business focused on on founders and helping them to grow, what were come, kind of some of the levels that you had to break through yourself when you were sort of going from, you know, being employed back in the day um, to then starting your own thing and, and being in that entrepreneurial space? Did you have a few sort of levels that you broke through in the early stages and what was that journey like for you? Yeah, no, I absolutely did. And I was very fortunate to have a group of friends and people around me Mm. who believed in me more than I believed in myself. I had mentors from my old job who were constantly telling me, no, no, you, you have to go, son. Like, stop, stop doubting this and go. Me, fundamentally, it was a lot of, you know, I had, I could, I guess, borrow belief from other people about my abilities because they've worked with me before and I guess that was probably the first fundamental hurdle I had to traverse was essentially you know trusting the fact that hey you can you can do this Mm. and the rest the next hurdle was essentially validating that the market needed this seeing founders have these ideas but just don't know where to go and me you know essentially wouldn't say seamlessly but generally you know quite predictably implementing solutions for them to transform their business has been it's been incredible. Like Bump, for example, I, I made a post last week where we started working with them like a year ago and they didn't have a franchise launched as well. Uh, but in the end of this year, they'd have around eight with 10, 10 franchises in total. Yeah. And just seeing that kind of, you know, seeing the evidence of your of your performance is probably the other thing of like, you know, that transition where you're going like, I can do this, like it's doable. Yeah, yeah. Um, And that's actually really cool that you mentioned them. I've been a a customer of them, Niv. So I actually took my uh, sister when uh, when she was heavily pregnant. I don't know if I've told you this, but I actually took my sister there for a a massage when uh, when she was about seven months pregnant. It was perfect. It was just such a a great experience and something nice um, that we did as sisters, you know, just to welcome her little one. Um, Oh, fantastic. Yeah, it's a really, really cool company. Yeah, no, it, it, we, we, yeah, it's, it's, and again, that's kind of the bonus of what I, of this journey, really, like you, you get to connect with really amazing founders who have these, you know, this like white hot belief about this place in the market. And, and I've, if I'm being honest, I've yet to listen to a congruent founder and didn't automatically connect to their mission. You know, it's, it's, I've yet, I've yet to come across that, not saying I won't, but almost every founder who truly believes in their product and is just not out here, you know, trying to just make a buck. And of course, everyone's here out to make money, but again, it's bigger than just that. Mm. I've yet to be, not be able to connect with them just because you're so passionate and they just see the world in such a unique way. It's, it's been, it's been really both incredible and a privilege to be able to do this. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And uh, and I guess, you know, a vision is something that we all kind of have or should have really when we're starting out in our business. So what's your vision for um, Integral Insights and where do you really want to take this moving forward? The vision is really simple. It's about taking what the founder's vision and belief about their future world mm-hmm. and essentially making it a reality. That's our job. Our job is essentially take what they already know is out there and should happen and our job is to create a pathway and reduce as much friction as possible for them to get there that's the vision for integral insights yeah i love that and so when you're in the beginning stages of that journey and you're working with founders who've got this big vision and you're helping them to achieve their vision as well what was that shift like for you in terms of growing your own brand and really starting to stand on your own two feet and say, like you said um, at the beginning, you had to borrow the beliefs in the beginning from others. And then you're out there on your own and you're doing the work, you're working with these great businesses. Um, how was that for you in terms of 
starting to market yourself, starting to put yourself on social media. I know you've got a big following over on Twitter as well. So what was that like for you in the the early stages to start growing your own brand and your own vision and allowing people to kind of know exactly what you're doing and who you're helping? Terrifying. That's the word. <laughs> yeah. It's terrifying. And, 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 and I think for most of us, anyone who says different is a liar. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it, because you're you're essentially taking, and I've, I've never been on socials. Socials has never been my thing. Yeah. Um, but when I started on Twitter, the rationale was essentially I wanted to test my ideas and convictions outside of vacuum. I wanted to be able to put it out there and he, see what people thought about how I framed and thought about things. Mm. So I spent a good chunk of time on Twitter before I became decently sized and, and just understanding how the world kind of responded to my ideas. And some of my ideas aren't particularly mainstream. So it was worth just understanding how the world responded. And and I guess after getting comfortable with Twitter, and again, Twitter is more of an aggressive platform in regards of interaction than LinkedIn mm. is. So once I got comfortable with the kind of engagement I was getting on Twitter, LinkedIn became a lot more of a... Um, easier step change to kind of like connect with people. And again, the context context in LinkedIn is a lot more refined and specific to what I'm doing. Mm. But just again, having Twitter initially as like this training grounds yeah, it's immensely useful. And there's really differences in the the platforms as well. Like you said, sort of Twitter operates in, in one way, has its own sort of culture, if you like. And then LinkedIn and, you know, Facebook, Instagram, all the other platforms that we and channels that we could potentially use in the business all operate quite differently. And we have to kind of relate to them differently as well. So um, I know that's when we started talking was when you reached out and wanting to really start using LinkedIn in the business. So tell me a little bit about, you know, why LinkedIn for you and what you were looking to do with LinkedIn. Yeah, I think LinkedIn specifically, but socials in general. Yeah. It are seriously underutilized. Mm. They're kind of considered as a, you know, ancillary kind of like think to decide kind of tool when I think it's a lot more than that. Um, you know, I think f- let's just look at it from two separate lenses. Like from a business point of view, it's a great platform to articulate to your potential client base exactly what you do and what you stand for. Mm. And I think a lot of people are not appreciate, they don't appreciate that kind of nuance. So for all the portfolio companies we work with, that's one of the focuses we do once we establish the groundwork that we initially establish, we start engaging them to, you know, start thinking about how you communicate your message to your potential customer base, because not everything is equal in, you know, a, a data, a data management as a service provider, A and B are, may offer what you might think are the same things, but fundamentally the way they approach the the business, the how they are, how their founders are, all very different. And it's important that we ensure those those kind of nuances are communicated. And then the other, on top of that, I feel like pe- people are, but they underestimate the potential impact of potential investors looking at their brand. Mm. So, you know, when you're on LinkedIn and you're talking about how your business is progressed, how things are going, that investors pay attention to that because essentially they're seeing your progression and your evolution over time. Yeah. So that's v- valuable from an investor's perspective because it, if anything, it validates in real time a founder and its team and its team's ability to execute. Yeah. So if you if you see you know if you see a founder and her team like killing it over meaningful modern time, mm-hmm. when you have that initial conversation, there's more context to that conversation. So yeah, I think for us, LinkedIn is an exceptionally powerful tool to essentially provide a better understanding, more nuanced conversations and better positioning than I think people can appreciate, at least at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And I think, you know, if if I think about a lot of the people um, that I work with and speak with as well, like LinkedIn, there's, there's kind of this fear sometimes that you have to show up as completely professional or whatever that means for you, or you have to have everything perfect and polished and I actually find that it's quite the opposite. Like you were saying, like people want to see that growth journey. And people just want to know, like, really the person behind the profile. 
Um, and so have you sort of found that experience yourself? And what are some of the experiences that you've had on LinkedIn in terms of just your interactions? And I know we worked on your content strategy and a few things like that. So as you sort of rolled that out, what's been some of the things that you've noticed for your business on the platform? And to your point, like one of the, that, that was my exact fear, right? Like you had yeah. to be perfect. What do you, what are you doing on this platform talking about imperfection? Um, but again, I think one of the things you said that was truly meaningful that helped me really shift my mindset around this was if they need you to be like that, then they're probably not for you, you know? So to me, that was, that was a pretty compelling kind of, um, positioning in my mm. head, at least about how to think about it. And because of that, I've been pretty um, deliberate in how I'm communicating on LinkedIn or how, how Integral Insights is communicating on LinkedIn. It's going to be very much how you see me in person or how you see me on these calls. Like it's going to be very sharp, succinct, and it's you know going to be to the point, very little fluff, no jargon, you yeah. know, and everything's going to be simple. And the kind of results from that is I start, I'm starting to attract people who resonate with that recently had a chat with a founder from New York who is building this incredible business, needs some help doing a couple of things. But it's so funny that the minute the phone call, I'm uh, sorry, the Zoom call connected, we knew you we were like, this is, I'm his people and he's my people. Like, mm. We just immediately knew that we did the first hello. Yeah. You know? and, and, and again, that's the kind of power of doing this right is you get to connect with the right people because they already have the context. They, if you're yeah. not for them, they they won't call you anyway. Yeah. Right. And if you are, the connection's always a lot more meaningful, and you get to work a lot quicker. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's no, been great. Yeah. No, that's awesome. And I think it it's a different level of conversation, right? When when people kind of have that context up front, you're already sort of building that relationship online. And you know, I've had similar experiences and so of my other clients as well, where, you know, people will reach out and it's like they're your long lost friend from many years ago. And you're like, I've never heard of this person in my life, but okay, let's have a chat. And then, you know, they just connect with you on a, a deeper level. It, it really just accelerates that sales process at the back end um, because you can just get to the crux of what's going on so much quicker. And then it's just simply finding a match. You know, there's no hard sales there's no hard convincing it's like people are already sold on you before they've even reached out um in many cases so it's awesome that you're having that experience too yeah no it's been it's it's been great and 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 again it's just like you're when you find the right person the click you don't you don't ever feel it's a sales call anyway it's like yeah. hey i'm i'm here to listen to what you have and if i have what you need mm -hmm. i'll talk let's let's work together if i don't yeah, I probably have someone I know who could help. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's fine. So the relationships I'm making on LinkedIn have been truly great. So, yeah, no, yeah. I definitely encourage people to start taking it a little bit more seriously and not as some ancillary tool. Yeah, yeah. And if there was someone that's listening to this who might be a little bit hesitant about putting themselves out there on LinkedIn, maybe they're just getting started. Um, yeah, what, what would be your advice to them having sort of gone through that process now yourself? <laughs> Yeah, there's no, there, I have nothing to offer you that's going to make you feel better about how uncomfortable it's going to feel. Like it's <laughs> yeah. just, it's just going to feel uncomfortable, especially if you're in a corporate role where for the most part you've been, you know, anything, everything has to be sanitized. Mm. I guess what I can offer is imagine if you could speak your, in your truth or your, your way and then attracting the people that connect to that. To me, that's, probably worth taking that risk yeah and again the worst outcome delete the post if it's so bad if it's really that catastrophic just delete the post no one's gonna know yeah yeah i love that i think it's you know there's always different levels of of comfort in in business and often it's the places that we're the most hesitant or the most uncomfortable to go to are actually the the key places that are going to unlock the most amount of growth both you know, personally and also in the business as well. As they say, resistance is the way, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I love that. And where do you see like the real impact for you moving forward in the business? So now that you're a bit more, you know, established on LinkedIn, you're sharing content in your truth, as you said, in your style, in a in a way that really suits you and it starts to attract the right kind of people. Um, if we look sort of, you know, 12, 24 months ahead in the business, what are you really excited about moving forward? Oh, so many things, but I'll, I'll list it down for you to make it yeah, e cool. easier. So one, obviously, 
the easy part is finding amazing clients like that's mm. that's already starting to manifest so that's that's the easy one yeah but then it's finding and accessing kind of like talent skills technology mm. that you you probably wouldn't be able to at least not as fast as i'm we're doing it now yeah because we're just reaching connections with people who could facilitate in our portfolio company build out so that mm, mm. so i think that's the other thing that's going to materially kind of transform because essentially they're looking for clients too and they're looking to solve a problem and if you can kind of make that connection quickly and make that and essentially you know low friction kind of implementation stuff it's going to be great and then on top of that i think at least for us we've already we've already invested in opportunities coming through socials already mm -hmm. so i think access to deals and and, and um and kind of like opportunities are going to increase both from like a standard investment kind of deal or potential mergers or acquisition opportunities for our portfolio companies and our clients so mm. there's so much there's so much here and 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 again because they see me and they see like there's a human behind it not just some corporate behemoth you, yeah you know they they know there's someone at least willing to put skin in the game out there to talk about these things and mm. yeah either work together or not yeah, that's brilliant. So the ROI for you is coming from, you know, lots of opportunities, not just for your business, but also for the portfolio companies that you're working with as well. Absolutely. That's really, really cool. Awesome. Um, and we've worked together, obviously, with with LinkedIn. <laughs> You've said a couple of nice things about what we've done. I'd just love to hear, um, you know, if there's people out there and they're, you know, on the fence about getting some help in this area, um, you know, maybe they know that their clients are on LinkedIn, but they're just not sure of the the how to and, and what to do. And maybe they're a little bit hesitant um, in, you know, investing in something that they're not too sure of the outcome yet. Um, what would be your advice to them? Oh, like, it's not worth the time to figure it out yourself. Like, absolutely. It's not worth the time hassle and the constant asking yourself, did I do it right? It's just not worth it. Just get someone who's a pro who's done it before. Like it's so, it could be so much easier than trying to navigate this yourself. So mm. don't like, you know, just do it. And again, like you've got such a, you know, such a wide kind of co collection of potential businesses. I'll be surprised if there is a business out there that you couldn't like figure out or at least done before that could, yeah. you know, benefit from this. So no, don't do it yourself. Get someone to help you. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And I agree. It's about, you know, buying back your time is something Absolutely. that is just, oh, I, you know, when we talk about breaking through those levels, it's a big one. Absolutely. I, and I think just the uncertainty alone is worth the price. The uncertainty of like, am I doing this right? Is is worth just paying to get that done? Because you, you that that's the worst part, right? You could be spending all this extra time and not realizing you've been making three super small mistakes that's messing everything up. For example, when I was posting with my only to my connections, that's an yes. that's an example <laughs> of a silly mistake. I would have just continued making. If someone mm. else didn't go like, uh, do that. So, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah it's, and it's what would have been the impact of that if we didn't sort of, you know, uncover that in the beginning? <laughs> yeah, I, I think you know that that phone call we were talking about that I just had definitely would not have had that because that came mm. from a cold outreach from a from an open from an open kind of uh, post. So yeah, yeah, there you go. At yeah. least that alone. <laughs> Yeah, we wouldn't have made that connection. So, there you yeah. go. One one little thing has just sort of well and truly covered it for Absolutely. you. Anyway. Absolutely. And, and and again, there's so many. I, I don't want to make it sound like it was just something that simple. There's so many of the stuff that mm. you kind of guided me through, like, you know, to make sure both finding that, because you're working with a whole bunch of constraints as well, right? Like, I want to say the things I want to say, but make sure I'm not going to piss everyone off while I say it. Well, why not ask a professional who's done this like a gajillion times to go like, hey, you're fine. Like, you're that's okay. You know? mm. So yeah, I think for that alone, it's probably worth worth the price of admission for sure. Yeah, yeah, awesome to hear, and I've loved uh, you know seeing your growth on the platform as well, Niv. It's awesome to see um, so many people that are reaching out and connecting with you who are your ideal clients and people that you know you can really help. Um, because I love seeing, and obviously I've shared at the start of this that I've been a customer of some of the businesses that you've worked with, um, which is really really cool. It's like a full circle kind of moment. 
And Absolutely. so uh, I love the the work that you're doing and, you know, working with those founders, you know, who have that growth mindset, who are really inspired by their vision and are wanting to break through those next levels. You know, if there's someone out there that is kind of looking at really starting to scale their business, um, maybe looking at, at raising capital, but they're unsure whether it's the right move for them or not, um, who would they be? Like, who would be the people to reach out to you and, and connect with you? And how can they come and find you? Perfect. So founders who with businesses, founders and CEOs of businesses making uh, $2 million in revenue plus, and who are looking to scale aggressively, just reach, reach me out through LinkedIn. That's probably the best way to get in touch with me now. Yeah. You, you nailed the trick question. <laughs> LinkedIn is obviously exactly. uh, the best place <laughs> considering where we've been speaking about it um, today. So that's awesome. So yeah, I, I definitely encourage you go and connect with Niv. Um, he's sharing some really great content now on scaling your business, um, which I know is really, really useful. So follow along um, and go and connect with Niv. And Niv, I've really enjoyed just like hearing your your journey and your business story um, and being brave to put yourself out there because I think, you. you know, at the end of the day, we can't sell a secret. People need to know us and what we do um, in order for us to to grow. So I love that you've, you've taken that step and uh, it's only up from here. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jamie. It's been awesome having you here. You're welcome. You're welcome.